All right. So everyone, you are welcome to the final part of work computation. And here, what we are going to do is that we are going to consummate everything together and calculate the weighted average cost of capital. All right. So that is basically what we are going to do. So here we look at the work. Now, don't forget it is weighted average cost of capital. It's not a simple average where you add and you divide. In a weighted average, there is always some form of multiplication in that, all right? So that is the way, all right? So when we say weighted average of cost of capital, what we are trying to do is that we are weighting the proportion of the capital structure. How much was given by equity? We will get it cost. We will add it to how much was given uh, by liability. We will add it cost. Reference share, we will add that, all right? So basically that is what we are doing all right now we are doing that because work one end can be regarded as the opportunity cost of capital opportunity cost of capital so if you are doing an investment project appraiser you always need a cost of capital that cost of capital that we are using, um, it is what we, if you are doing an investment appraisal, we said that the work can be used as a discount factor. And it is also, if you use retained earnings, for example, um, we are talking about retained earnings is the opportunity cost of capital. So opportunity cost, probably you could have used the money for something else. You decided to use it as an investment. So that one too is the same thing. So yeah, at one end, it is the cost of capital for evaluation, project evaluation. On the other end, it is the opportunity cost of capital. All right. So basically, uh, that is that. That is what you need to understand. All right. So basically, these are the two fronts. And so cost of capital can be the, the weighted average can be the, uh, um, what do you call it? The discount factor can also be the opportunity cost. So basically that is that. Now, watch this. Um, we are looking at you weighing everything up. As you can see here, you are weighing everything up. All right. Now, remember, I've made a note here that, um, and the cost of capital that can be used for companies' investment projects if the following conditions apply, i.e. the project is insignificant, all right, it, relative to the size of the company because what you see in there is that it is the company doing the project not the project doing the company so the project is just a part of the company all right so that is that or the company adapts to pull money from different sources to actually invest in that project so from equity from uh, de uh, debt all right that is that and they will maintain their existing capital structure for for the same uh, year long all right so if they will change it, we will look at the changes. We will look at that. But if they are continuing to use their capital structure that they have, which means that financial risk is the same, also the systematic risk, all right? Don't forget, financial risk comes from unsystematic. It's the company's own debt structure, all right? Then we are also looking at the situation where the systematic risk too is the same. So what is the work formula? What is the work formula? So work, as you can see, weighted average cost of capital, as you can see, is that KE, and I'll explain the variables, multiplied by VE all over the sum of whatever uh, market value is the question will give you. So let's say if you are three, you have VE plus V um preference share vp or vd let's say vd plus preference share vp all right that is that plus so you have to be denominating these things with so if you come denom, so you have the denomination you do for each of them so if you have ke then the next one is kd and the kd can be in so many forms all right so you can extend it all right it can be kdi kdr kd tradable, non-tradable, I mean, all those things. So that one to be weighted with VD and you maintain VE, VD, VP, 
P, so plus KP multiplied by VP all over the same thing, VE, VD, VP. All right, so that is that. Now, what is KE? We've done KE, cost of equity. What is VE? VE is the market value. Market value of equity. All right, the same thing here is KD, cost of debt. So the cost of debt, it can be redeemable, irredeemable. I mean, all those forms, all right? Then VD is the market value of debt. Market value of debt, all right, of debt. Then we have KP, that is cost of preferences. Then we have VE, VVP, market value of the preference here. So that is that. Now watch that in some um, books, they will add uh, to the VD one minus T. I don't do that, why? Because for all the cost of capitals that we have been doing for the debt, we always did that one minus T already. So we don't need to bring the one minus T here again. It will be a double do, all right? So because we do that, I just want to keep this side simplified and that is that, all right? So basically this is all we need to do is to pick up a question and try to calculate the various forms in the question. So we have our first illustration. Are you ready to try? So in the note I put here that since everything is already done in, at post tax, no need to add um, one minus T to the above formula. Listen, everything is in this book. Everything is in this book. It's good you get one. It will help you. So look at this question. Um, it's a very simple question. Got it. It says that an entity has the following information in its stated uh, statement of financial position. This is the ordinary shares. It also has unsecured 12%. All right. The ordinary shares are currently quoted at 130. And the loan note is at trading at 72 per this. The ordinary dividend is 15 pairs worth, uh, has just been paid, and as expected growth is this, then we have tax of this. So we are supposed to calculate the work from this small illustration. So as we do, we have ordinary shares, that's equity. We need to calculate KE and also find VE, all right? So what is KE? Which method is applicable here? Dividend valuation method, because we are giving dividend. All right, so you could see clearly that dividend valuation method, all over market value, or you can use PO or MV, whichever one you want to do. But don't forget there is growth. So one plus D or plus D. There is no issue cost. So that is that. So if we fixed in this, um, the question said that the ordinary is quoted at this. All right, then it says that the ordinary dividend of 15 pesos has just been paid. So it is X div already. So 15 pesos is written like this. All right. What is the price of ordinary share? Um, price of ordinary share is quoted at 1.3, 130 pesos. That is like on zero. Yeah. All right. So that is that. You can put in your currency signs into bracket. One plus growth rate is 10. So to make it 1.1, right? Yeah or plus 0 0.1. So let's work it out. All right, let's work it out. So when we work this thing out, what are we having? We have 0.15 multiplying 1.1, right? All divided by 1.30 plus 0.1. That gives me 22.8 six zero point zero point two two six nine so if i am rounding this one to up it can be 23 percent. so that is what you have then what is ve because you need to find ve ve is the market value of the share the market value of the share now look at this the each share is quoted 130 so that is 1.30 but how many shares do we have? This is the part we need to multiply by. So we are multiplying it by 2,500 divided by 
zero point five. That is how much we can get. So the shares, the number of shares multiplied by the CD value. So how much do we have? We have two thousand five hundred divided by point five, so that we get five thousand shares, and each price is one point three. And so if I multiply it by one point three. I get 6,500. So my VE is 6,500. That's it. Then I'm left with unsecured loan notes. Uh, what do we have about the unsecured loan notes? It says that it is trading at 72. All right. So it's a loan note trading at 72 at par this. So do we know it's redeemable? Do we know it is irredeemable? We don't really know. It's an unsecured loan stock. So that is what we have. Now, since it is an unsecured loan stock, what are we going to do? We are, are we going to treat it at, uh, what do we call it? Um, redeemable, irredeemable, and all those ones sort of. So um, now what we are going to apply will be like the irredeemable concepts, all right? So that is what we are going to apply. Because good news for us, so let's say KD, irredeemable, all right? So let's say that, and we have an interest to pay. So what is the interest? Don't forget, interest is on 100 nominal. Don't forget that. This is it. So it means 12% over 100 nominal will still give us 12 CDs. That is it. Don't forget that. That statement... It's very, very important that you, you are able to decipher. Tax is 1 minus T, so 1 minus 0 0.3. What is the market value? The market value of the debt, where is it? 72. So we have that, 72 CDs. If you deem this irredeemable, you have to do the, uh, you have to get a redemption. And here you would assume that probably is assumed at power or anything. But this is a, a this concept is of, uh, kind of an irredeemable in nature. All right, so that is that. Now, what will we have? What I will have here is 12 divided, uh, 12 by 0.7, eh? that's it. And I'm dividing it by 72. And that gives me 0 0.11, uh, one, so like I have 0 0.1166. So proxying this is like 12%. To do the smart place like 12%. So, what is my VD? Yes, VD, this is where you have to be very careful. It is per 100. So, that is that. So, what I'm going to do, just as you did, the per unit price multiplied by this, the division here. So, the same thing you are going to do here per unit price of um, what is the price of the the trading, the trading price is this, but you have the nominal. So what, what are you doing? So you have thousand here. It is per every thousand. And you are multiplying it by the price of 72. So you realize that, I mean, this thing should give me VD of 720. So that is how we find the values. That is the most important one. So uh, I think after this, I will show. So this is the, the market values, the market values. All right. We will later look at the choice of weighing. All right. For each one of them. Now, that makes my work calculation very simple. I have two things. What is KD? Uh, KE. What did we get? 23%, right? So 0 0.23 multiplying VE. What was VE? I think it was 6,500, right? So the total values for the denominator will be how much? Um, so I have 720 plus 6,500, right? So that is that. 6,500, that is 7,220. Don't forget there are three zeros at the top. It has been catered for, all right? So that is that. So 7,220 7, is the answer. So I would do, if I pick the first one, which is 6,500, I would do divided by 7,220. Plus, uh, I had 0 0.12 here, multiplying 720 over 7,220. All right, so that is it. 
Now, if you do this one, how much are you going to get if you combine all these things together? I'm having like something like a 20. This one is 21.5. So let's say 22% proxy. I mean, rounded together, let's say 22%. So basically, that is what you do. All right. So you have to extend the analysis to a bigger example. So, I mean, this is what we've done. All right. That is it. So the choice of weighing, all right, for we, we have um, book values. You saw that we can use the book values. We can actually say 2,500 plus 1,000 is a choice of weighing. Uh, but so you see here, to find the average cost, the various source of finance must be weighted according to the amount held in each of the companies. So somebody could have said 1,000 and what was that? 1,000 and 2,500, right? Yeah. But it says that the weights could be sourced through the book value. So you can use the book values in the balance sheet. Or you can use the market value, which represents the current opportunity cost of capital. So wherever possible, the market value should be used. That's why I use the market values. All right, pair the market value. But someone can choose to use the book value. So instead here, you use uh, uh, 2,500 over 3,500 using the book values. But wherever possible, try and make the market values as, unless you don't have the market values, you stick to the book value of that particular one. So we have a, an elongated question to deal with, a very long one to deal with. All right. So um, we will take a look at this question, deal with one or two past questions. Then we are done with the work. So it says that... Um, ABC Limited has the following. So we have ordinary shares, we have preference shares. So this one, there's a preference share. There is a convertible and there's also an unsecured loan stock. All right, it says the ordinary share is, uh, has a current net market price of, that's the exit of three. Dividend of 2013 is um, 33.33 per square per share has just been paid. And uh, dividend for preceding four years preceding four years that means there's a four years before then our current year 2013 is this dividend so you should start drawing attention to some drawing your attention to something what's that growth calculation all right now we have it says that we have a dividend uh are paid once in a year and are expected to grow um at the as a uh, same rate as they have been since 2009 the preference share uh, here has a market value of 80% or 0.8. Um, the 2013 dividend of 12 has just been paid. Uh, dividend per is on preference share is paid once a year. The convertible debenture has a market value of 120. The, convert the stock is convertible into ordinary shares of um, four years time in four years time at a rate of 100 nominal for 37 ordinary shares. The market value of the shares at the time of conversion is this. So that is the conversion value, all right? Current conversion value. If not converted, the stock will be redeemed in four years' time at this price. So that is the redemption price. We will do our conversion price and compare to know what exactly to do. The unsecured loan note has a market value of 80, and it is redeemable at par in five years. So that's another redeemable. So means we are going to do two IRs, IRRs, one for the convertible, one for the redeemable. That's a work. And we are supposed to calculate work with tax being what, 25%. So 25%. So what do we need? Cost of each and their market values. All right, so let's start with KE. We know the KE formula is DO market value uh, one plus G or plus G. There's no issue cost. So um, we know DO, they've given us DO, but we need to find growth, right? You remember the formula for growth? D1, 1 over N or minus 1. I guess you remember that. So if we are doing the growth, the current one is what? 33.3 pesos. So that is like 0 0.333 divided by the very old one, the very first one in 2019. That will be... 2009, that would be 0 0.245, 1 over N. N is the number of times this is growing. So 
Uh, this is five years, so definitely that is four years. That's the number of time it is growing. Or minus one. What do we have? So 0.333 over 0.245 raised to the power 1 over 4. That one alone gives me 1.07 minus 1. That is 0 0.0797. So rounding it up, I can say my growth is 0 0.08. That's like 8%. So we, I have my growth. So now let me fix it into my formula. So I have KE being equal to what is the dividend just been paid? 0 0.333. What is the market price? The same market price of this is three CDs. Because everything is in CDs here. Yeah. Then what do I have? One plus G, right? One plus G. I found G, which is 0 0.08 or plus 0 0.08. All right. So let's work this thing out. So I have 0.333, that is multiplying 1.808. All right, then I'm dividing that by three, then I'm adding it to 0.08. So what I have here is 0. Point, so check, 0. 0.19988. Put the small place, that is like 20%. So that is it. Then immediately, I find my VE. Remember how we do VE? VE, this is one Ghana CD share. Every price is three. Multiply by 250,000 all over the one Ghana CD share price here. All right. So what will I have? That's like 750. I don't need to point it. That's like 750,000. So that is what I have. So I found the issues for... Um, v E K E. Let's go to the next one. The next one is a preference share, right? It said that um, this is about the ordinary preference share. So K P, right? Do you remember K P dividend over market price? Simple X interest or X day. So that one is simple. What is the dividend? Uh, preference share I pay dividend of zero point eight. Then what is the market price of the dividend? The market price, uh, oh, actually the 0 0.8 is the market price. The dividend is 12, has just been paid. So we have 0 0.12 all over 0 0.8. So that is that. What am I getting? 0 0.12 over 0 0.8. That is 15%. 15%. That's 0 0.15%. So what is my VP? VP is simple. The market value of the money is um, 0 0.8. And these are the 12% preference share. So that is the same thing, the way you did with the... So, uh, so here you are having uh, the price, which is 0 0.8, multiplying 50,000 all over 1. So what will I get? So uh, 50 by 0 0.8, right? That gives me 40,000, 40,000. So that is my VP, all right? So that is that. Let's go to the debts. So convertible, 6% uh, convertible. What do we need to do? It's convertible. So we need to do the cost of conversion. So conversion value. You remember the formula? Yes, PO1 plus G. N R. What is P O? So we come down the information they give us. This is the va value. Yeah, we look at the conversion size. So we have we have four point zero eight per swiss. Then we have one plus. They didn't give us the growth of the share, so it's zero. Number of years to take before the conversion. Four years, eh? So four years. Number of shares is 37 shares, right? Ordinary shares. So let's do the conversion. So we have one raised to the power four. Basically, it should be the number itself. So we are multiplying 4.08 by 37. And that gives me 150.96. What is the redemption value? Redemption value they gave 
was 125. So which one is bigger? Of course, this is bigger. So we will use that as a presentation to determine our IRR. So we have our year, year zero, we have one to four years and the fourth year, we have the cash flow. What is the market value? Is what 120. So we have 120. What is interest post tax? You know, the thing is, what is the is six percent? So six percent coupon will be six post tax one minus zero point. What is the tax rate? 25. So 0 0.25. So meaning that basically six by um 0.75, right? So that gives you like 4.5. So what we are actually using is 4.5. All right. So on the last day, instead of 125 redemption, it will be 150.96. Discount factor, choose your choice. I have, like I always would prefer to use the six first. So I will use discount factor of 6%. Here is 0 0.100. Um, so... We are at page 392. Let me write it down. Page 392. Let's go and read. 6% annuity, four years. 6% annuity, four years. So please make sure the figure you are easy, you can read it from the table, the, the discount factor to make your job easier. If 6% is not there, use another one that you can find in the table. All right. And 6%, uh, this is actually the disc. Uh-huh. This is the annuity. So let's go to the discount factor. 6% for year four. 0 0.79. All right. So what will be my PV? So that we know what to do. Here's 120. So 4.5 by 3.546. That is 15.96. Then um, I have 150. 0.96 multiplying 0.792. That gives me like 119.56. So basically, so what is the figure? Plus 15.96 minus 120. My MPV is uh, NPV is 15.52. So I can push forward. Let me go and use like eight or let's say 10. Uh, it depends on you. Choose the one that you'll be okay with. So I'm using 10. So here will still be 1.00 and I'll have negative 1.2. What is 10% for on the fourth year? 10% 10, 10 on the fourth year is uh, 0. Point, on the fourth year is 0. 0.683. All right, that's it, right? Then annuity four years for 10%. 10% four years. That's 3.170. So 3.170, going to multiply 4.5. That gives me 14.27. Then this side, I had 150.96 multiplying 0.683. That's 103.11. So total, this plus 14.27 minus 120. That gives me negative 2.62. Means if I had probably used 8%, I would have had it, right? Since I didn't get zero, we use the interpolating formula, which says that um, my IRR will be given by the first rate I used was 0 0.06 plus NPV of that my into uh, down here 15.52 minus minus 2.62 so that makes this side a plus then I have 10% um, which is 0 0.1 minus 0 0.06 alright so what will I get for that using that so 15 Point five two plus two point six two. All right, then I do fifteen point five two divided by that, and I'll multiply it by zero point zero four. All right, this side. Then plus point zero six, and that is giving me 
zero point zero nine four proxy nine percent. So that is that. That is that. Now, what is the market value? What was our page? Page uh, three nine two. So what is the market value for that? It's 75,000. And they told us that it's every 100 CDs nominal, right? Every 100 CDs nominal with a price of 120. So the same way you've been doing it. So um, VD um, convertible will be given by 75,000. Don't forget, you could use the book values, but we say use the market value where possible. Every pair, every hundred, multiplying their price, the market value of 1.2 or 120, right? Yeah, so what do we have? We have 75,000 divided by 100, multiplying 1. 1, 120. That gives a market value of 90,000. So we've done with it. So we are left with the last one, right? Which is the unsecured loan. All right, the unsecured loan to as a price of 80, redemption in five years time. Mm -hmm. All right, so that is that. Uh, the interest are paid annually. If it is paid twice a year, you remember how we do it. So this one is um, unsecured loan stock with a market price. It is redeemable. So another KD, R, we will set up our year, zero, one to five years, then the year five for our redemption. This is not convertible. So our redemption is how much? Redeemable at par. Redeemable at par means 100. The interest, one minus T, uh, what is the percentage there? 8%. So that means 8%, one minus T. So 8% T is 20. Uh, so it is 8 CDs, one minus 0 0.25. And how much is that? 8 by 0.75, right? That gives you 6. So it means 6 is the value you are using. What's the market value? We are told the market value for this is 80 CDs. So 80. Again, so this is where our cash flows, discount factor. We can use the 8%. Okay. Then here will be 1.000 PV 80. 6. Let's go and read. We are still at page. Uh, this is page 394, right? 393, okay. So annuity factor, 8%. So um, 8%, five years. That's 3.993. Discount factor, 8%. 0 0.5. Six eight one. Actually, you can decide to use six percent and copy what you have there to save time and paste it there. So the next one I'm going to use, whether positive or negative, I'm going to use um ten so that I can just repeat this. I don't need to scroll down. Whether I get so it's not by force um that you have to use as it's, it's your choice. So I can use a discount factor for my next one to be 10%. Then I'll copy what I've done because, because it's exam and I need to be fast. So 3.170 and 683. No, this one is five years. Then I need to be careful. So I don't make a mistake. So it's not the same year. So I need to be careful. So five years discount factor is for 10% is actually 6 point, 0 0.621. Then the annuity will be what? 3.791. So that is the only care one has to take. All right. So I'll get another PV because here is always the same. So let's get the figures into this. So uh, what do I have? 6 by 3.993. That's 23 points. then this one should definitely be 68.1. Yeah, because it's 100. So um, plus 68.1 minus 80. That gives me 12.06. So here to 62.1 it will be. Then 6 by 3.791. 
that's 22.75. Point seven five. Uh, so minus eighty plus sixty two point one. That gives four point eight five. So that is it. So I R R. That is zero point zero eight plus twelve point zero six. Twelve point zero six minus four point eight five into bracket zero point one minus zero point zero eight. That's all. So this four point, I'm adding it to twelve point zero six. All right. So twelve point zero six divided by that answer, multiply by zero point zero two. That's the difference here. Then plus. 0 0.08 that gives me also nine percent so i have two nine percent eh? so that is nine percent so what is the so this is the kd redeemable so what is vd redeemable uh, let's go back to our page 394 all right we are told that hey wow that's a jump we are told that um the value of that one is 80. All right. And what do we have here? 150. Also at a hundred nominal. So 150 over 100, over 100, multiplying 80. So what will we have for the value? So the value is um, 150, um, thousand divided by 100, multiplying 80. Value is 120. So if I have the values for all of them, I will just have to quote my formula and add the denominators. So straight up. So I know that my KE, so KE, VE, what is my VE? V, so first one, when we did, it is, um, we had 8%, no, it's, 20% $750,000. And this one was $750,000. You don't need to write this before you solve your work, but I'm just using it as an illustration for you. So um, the next one was what? Preference shares. How much did we get for preference share? That is 15% and $40,000. 15% and 40,000. So let's have it here. Okay, P, 15%, VP, 40,000. Then we had cost of debt, the convertible. I think that one was 9%. Eh? We have 9% and 90,000. VD convertible 90,000, right? Then we have KD redeemable, also 9%. VD redeemable 120,000. So let's add our value here. All right. So we have 750 plus 40 plus 90 plus 120. That gives me 1 million. So if I am doing my work formula now, which says that work in this case will be equal to K E V E V E V P V D. Uh, the V Ds are two. So V D or uh, well, you can represent just V D. All right, one V D, but you know that your value here is this. Uh, by K P V E, you repeat this. So you are doing it four times. So that is that. The next one is K D C multiply. Oh, so here is supposed to be V P, sorry. So V D C, you repeat this. makes it long right 
then you add the last one. All right, so that is that. So it can be a long list, right? But I know all the denominator is this. So what will work be? So work therefore is given by 20%, which is 0 0.02 multiplying um, 750, I can even say 750 over 1,000, because zero zero so cancel itself. I mean, 1 million plus, um, the next one was what percentage? 15, 0 0.15 by, what is 40,000? Over 1 million. Plus zero point zero nine multiplying what um ninety over one million plus uh another zero point zero nine multiplying one twenty over one million. So basically you can do that um and find your answer. So what do we have? 750 by 1 million by 0.2. So I, I know Gen Z generation will put all of them together and write the answer, but that's fine. You can do that. There's nothing wrong about that. 40 over 1,000 um, by 0.15. Um, so that, that one is a little bit tricky. Uh, it is giving me like something like 0 0.006. That's what it is giving me. Um, plus, uh, we have 90 divided by 1 million. You don't need to, you can punch everything together and write your final answer, which I know is an act of the Gen Z generation. You are not wrong. You can do that. So this one too is 0 0.09 plus by 0 0.09. That one too is giving me 0 0.0081. All right. So plus 120,000 multiplying 0 0.09. So this one too gives me 0 0.01. I add everything up. All right, so I have point multiplying um, this figure that I have will be multiplied by uh, added to 0 0.0081 plus 0 0.006 plus 0 0.15. And that in total is giving me 17.49. That is like 17.49%. So if I want it at a whole, I can say it is um seventeen percent. All right. So that is that. You may get a different answer, but you are not wrong. Like you may use a different percentage for the IRR, uh, but in the end you are not wrong. All right. So like close to eighteen. All right. So that's that. Approximation. That's that. So that's how we do work. So now you have a past question. Uh, this past question, uh, how many past questions? You have two past questions. So uh, you have to deal with this. All right. So we will be looking at the past questions. So can we do that? All right. So let's take a glance at the past question. Okay. So um, we have this. The colleague has been taken ill. The managing director has asked you to take over from the colleague and provide urgently needed estimate for a discount rate to be used for appraising a new capital investment project. All right. So you have been giving your colleague working notes, and this is what you have. Your working notes estimates for the next five years, annual averages. All right. So you look at it very well. So look at it. We have this. 
stock market uh, stock market total return on equity as return on equity we have companies own dividend yield companies own share rise share price rise standard deviation on stock market that is risk systematic risk 14% growth rate on companies own earnings growth rate on companies own dividend growth rate on companies own sales Treasury bill, that's risk-free. Don't forget that. So instead of giving you, probably how to do a CAPM formula, look at what they are giving you. What is the market risk? Market risk, RM, for example, you have to find that thing. Systematic risk of standard deviation of the stock market return is given. Systematic risk of the comp company's own risk of the market, not company's own. So be careful. He says that the company gearing is this. Is one is to two debt to equity after tax. Uh, and after tax earnings available to ordinary shares recently were. So we can find the dividend from there, basically that. Um, of which 21 was distributed as ordinary dividend. So find the number of shares and know the dividend amount per share. The company has 1 million shares, all right, you are giving. Uh, currently trading on the stock exchange at 3.3, .3, so you can find your market value if you want to go around it. And corporate um, debt is assumed to be risk-free, okay? Company pays tax of 30%. Estimate the work using dividend valuation model, using CAPM model, all right? And clearly state any assumption of the two. So, I mean... As for the assumption, is the theoretical aspect of it. You, you've learned that, so I won't go through that with you. But the next thing that you have to learn how to do, you remember the dividend valuation model, all right, or the dividend growth concept. So here, you are going to do that for a 10 mark, these two for a 10 mark. So can we look at that? Can we look at that together? So let's look at that together. So with all these things you have, now, what we're going to do, let's create a whole space. We have been asked to, one, do the dividend. Valuation. Model. So that is the first one that we are going to take a look at. So we have the formula given by D.O over market price, one plus G plus G. So that is uh, the KE, all right, using this valuation method. So what is DO? How much dividend have they just paid, of which this was distributed? So uh, dividend is actually 21.21. .21 Four zero zero zero. If I want per share, um, dividend per share, because it looks as if the market price was giving per share three point two one. So and the share is one million. So it means that if I want per share, I will divide it by one million. Or I can use, I can multiply one million by this and also use as my market value the same thing. All right. So um, that is that. So what do we have? So herein, what we have means that uh, it will be like something like 21.4, right? So that is that. So 21.4 divided by, let's say, that is 21.4. Dividend just paid is 21.4. And we know that the market price is given is 3.21. And growth, where is growth? The company's growth of dividend is 11. So you see what where they fish, they put the figures. You just have to be careful. You know what you are looking for and you do that. And so um, KE will be given by 21.4 divided by 3.21 into bracket 1.11 or plus 0 0.11. That's all. So what do we have divided by, uh, this figure is multiplying 1.11. 1. 1. 
or divided by 3.21 um, plus plus 0.11. What do I have? I have 7.51%. So that is what I have for my KE, all right? If I want to run this thing up, I'll keep it at seven. And this is what I have. So what do you think my VE will be because I'm doing work? VE, what is the number of shares they have? You remember how we do it? The value, all right? It says that um, after tax earning available for ordinary shareholders, that's the profit after tax, and we of which this dividend is paid. So we really don't have the nominal value for shares, but we know that they, they have shares of 1 million, and each price is how much? 3.21. So that gives me 3.21 million. That is my value. So that is that. And we need to look out for that of any form of debt. Okay. They say the company debt is risk free. All right. So that is that. So if there is debt, then we need to calculate the value of debt also. So the cost of debt, value of debt. Don't forget it's post tax. So here we have um, KD which we've not been given segregation as to whether they have redeemable or redeemable. Without that, uh, interest one minus T over market value. Do you have market value of their debt? We may find it out. All right. So they are saying that the company has a gearing and their, their debt to equity ratio is this. But we know equity. So we can find debt. The market value is one is to two. We know equity value is how much? The value of their equity, they, we were told that it is um, 1 million shares and this is, this is the value. So it means that if we know the value of equity, debt is one, equity is two. So debt is one of equity. That is that. So we will need times two of the debt to get our equity. So since we have this, what can we do? So our debt, so let me do it. So it's uh, equity debt to, debt is one, equity is two. So it means the equity is two of debt, two times of debt. We don't know debt, but we know equity. So it means that our debt is actually 3.21 million divided by two to get our debt. That is the meaning. Uh, so that when we get the half and we multiply by two, we will get our equity. That That's what it means. 3.21 divided by two. And that is, um, that is giving me 1,605,000. So basically that is that. And this is 3.2 million. So that is our debt. And that is according to the question by market value. That is it. So it means that if I want my KD, Uh, what is the interest that the entity is paying? They said that their debt is risk-free, right? Corporate debt may be assumed risk-free. If it is risk-free, then it means it is 12%. So that is something you need to be very, very careful about. Very, very careful. So it means that 12% multiplied by a coupon will give us 12 CDs into bracket. Where is 1 minus T? 1 minus T, where is T? T is 0 0.3. All over. Um, what do we have? 1 point. So this is the value. Value of debt. So that is that one, that one alone is 1 point. So if I check my calculator. So here we have. Is it? So corporate debt is assumed to be risk-free and we don't have the mark. We have the market value of the debt. So what type of debt is this? Which one would you assume? Do we assume it to be um, a simple bank loan, um, non-tradable? If you are doing non-tradable, what, what will it be? So by um, 
8.7, right? That's just 8.4. We are doing on tradable. So it's a corporate debt. So yeah, that's it. Company debt. So that is 8.4%. So this is it. If you, that is it. So somebody on the other hand says that, oh, okay, are we seeing are we seeing the debt as a um a debt instrument where it is a preference share? This is not preference share. Neither is it a redeemable share. So we are left with non-tradable bank loan. It's a corporate bank loan. All right. So it's neither. Uh, we are not giving any redeemable concept. They didn't say that it is redeemable or redeemable. Uh, so and they didn't talk about it in the sense that it is a, a um preference share aspect of debt. So this is a bank loan. It's a corporate debt. So that is that is that. So it means that I have that. And what would be my VD um corporate bank loan? All right. What will be that? Of course, you had your value of your debt basis which you are calculating this so the value of your debt 1.605 meaning that the total denominators will be i have um 3.21 plus 1.605 right that gives me 4. 4. Point, so it's actually like this so you can say 4.815 million. All right. So that is that. Now I have the cost. So work is easy to do. It's just the figures are there. You just have to be very, very careful. Very, very, very careful about that. All right. So that is that. Um, You saw the dividend growth rate, companies own dividend growth rate and own dividend yield. I mean, this is growth rate. G. But you may see another company dividend. Okay, that is even not growth. So you shouldn't be confused about that. These are the groups. These are the groups. This is on sales. This is on earnings. So now, what do we have here? We will have KE multiplying VE, VE, VD, right? Plus KD multiplying v, VD, VE, VD. Making our job very simple. The first one, what did we get? I know this is 8.4%. You can write it as 0 0.084. Uh, this is a 1605. So you can just hit 1.05 million. Then you put 4.815 million here to 4.815 million. What did we get for the cost of capital? We know that this is 3.21 million. But the cost of capital, let's go and look for it. 7.51. All right. So what, what is our work? So I do 1065 divided by answer, multiply by 0 0.084. Here is 28%. 3.21 divided by 4.81 4 815 sorry multiplying by 7.151 that is 5% so in all it's like 33% so that is it you use that to find your work and since the mark is 10 marks probably this one alone is 5 right all right. Then the next one, they said that we should calculate it using the CAPM model. Now, the CAPM model, remember what we learned in determining CAPM. So the CAPM model is given by RF plus beta. But the beta, we need to be careful. We have what entity is that? Is it beta A or is beta E? We need to be careful about that. So let me just do beta. Rm minus Rf. All right. So we need to be very, very, very careful about these things. All right. Very, very careful. Now, we, I'm going to pick the figures one by one. So Rf, we put it there, beta, Rm, and all those things that we put it there. So what is our Rf? We are told that Rf is risk-free. And what is risk-free? Risk-free is 12%. Treasury bill. Then what is beta? Uh, these people are using debt and equity. So one is to two, you remember. 
All right. So uh, what is the beta in the system? Risk in the system is 14. So systematic, 14. Companies and the standard deviation is 10. So you remember what we did uh, in the video. So we had 14% um, all right, so that is what we have. Then the system one divided by the system one, which is 10%, the standard deviation on the market is 10%. So in all, so if there is um, covariation, we multiply these by the covariation. And the covariation, so here, we don't really have the question they didn't give us. So it gave us this, uh, this is the system risk. All right, so that is what we have to talk there. Then we have a standard deviation on the return on the market. So these are the market issues. All right, so basically that is that. So you can get your beta by doing this. And this is, I think it's 1.4. So that is that. So it is because you see, you have to be very, very careful. Beta is calculated. Sometimes you have the covariance. Um, variance is square of uh, square of the, uh, standard deviation. All right, that's variance. All right, but here you need covariance. So there was a question we did, we were giving covariance. So you just multiply. Uh, we, we were giving a competitor and the market. And we had our own project to also do. So um, we take the market once. All right, like it was an expert and something. We did something like that. And we were given a covariance of the market. So we multiply that, we, we, we get that. So we divided the, was it, I've forgotten the other name. We did the division and we multiply by the covariance. So take a look at it in the uh, video that we did about cost of equity, especially calculating beta. All right, so here, this is what we have. All right, so what is RM? Uh -huh. RM2 is determined. Now, what is RM? Risk from the market. So here you need to get the market risk. Market risk. And you need to also ask for risk review. So if you look at this, risk is from the market. So market risk or, re sorry, return on the market. So how much are we getting on the market? If you see this, they are telling you that the stock exchange, the market thing that they are doing is actually 16%. That is what you see there. That is the market return on the market. So yeah, stock market total return, return on the market. So you see this one to be 16, RM to be 16. But you this RF is already known uh, in terms of uh, 12%. So in CAPM formula, we will have 12% plus beta. Don't forget, beta is um, is the risk. Beta is risk. It's the risk component of it. And we did all those things in the video one. So we have, and we said that uh, for a company that is on GED, the beta is actually the systematic one, the one that you can't avoid. All right. So you see the systematic one. This is it. Systematic risk. Relative to the market that is it relative to the market all right systematic risk relative to the stock exchange market all right oh so you see he has a return on equity but the standard deviation is also risk don't forget i taught you mean and standard deviation when we started mean is the return standard deviation is the risk so standard deviation on this company's own is what you see. So if you have the system one, then you generate the thing, the beta from the market. So the total market, this is our own relative to the uh, standard deviation on the stock exchange market. Systematic risk relative to the standard deviation of the stock exchange market. So, so I wrote beta again. Beta is 1.4 RM, which is 16% minus 12%. Uh, that makes it 4%. So Let's just do 0 0.04 multiplied by 1.4 plus 0 .0, uh, 0.12. That gives me um, 
17.6%. So that is what I have. So that is that. That is that. So this, and then it means this one looks a little huge with this formula. Did you have everything correct? Let me see. 1.605 divided by 4.815 multiplying 0 0.084. Oh, it's uh huh. It's actually zero point zero two eight. So it should be two point eight percent. Yeah, good. So it's, here it should be two point eight percent, making this one seven point eight percent. All right. So basically, that is that. All right. So that is what you go through to do, and that is what you have in there. So you just have to be careful. All right. The rest is a theory uh, thing that you do so let's see what we have here okay that's it this uh plus g did not come so you may have to look at it correct it uh here should be plus g the formula plus g is not there so um that is that look at it and rectify it apart from that yeah i think this one is okay yeah it's okay yeah you had this you also work this thing out so why are we having um oh we've not done the work so we already know the other one. So you can just put it in. Um, we we found the using the CAPM. CAPM, this one is um, 17 like we have. So the work, you already have for the other one. So just that you are repeating the work just that this time around. This two over three is the same as what we had there, right? The same. It's the same as this. This is two out of it, three. All right, so if we are doing it, we will probably do it like 7.6% multiplied by, uh, we have 3.21 over 4.815 plus, so this will be 8.4% multiplying, um, what was the figure? 1.605, right? All over 4.815. So let's see how it goes. 3.21 over 4.815 multiplying 0 0.7, 17 and 6. This side is like um, 0 0.1173. Then, of course, this one was 2.8 or 0 0.028. So, plus 0 0.028. 0 0.028. So, plus 0 0.028. So in all, I have 14.5. So that is that. That is my work. All right. Close. Differences are this one. So that is that. So that is the question. Um, There are other questions here like that. You need to take a look at it. Um, We are supposed to, this one is compute the operating leverage. So you just have to use the formulas to calculate operating leverage. So there ain't, there, are, there are not much to be done. So this is the formula. For operating leverage, percentage change in operating income, percentage change in sales. And you know how to compute percentage change, all right? So um, P1 minus PO, current minus previous, all over previous. So percentage change in one over percentage change in that. That is how you do operating gearing, percentage change in operating income in respect to sales, all right? This is ratios. Operating income with respect to sales. So you do that, and that is all. So you do that for the two companies. I think there are two companies. Yeah, FEM, FEM A and FEM B. All right, so you can do that for the two companies. So basically, that is that. Financial leverage, too, is... um. So you have operating leverage, which comes from, from your operating income with respect to sales, and your financial leverage, which comes from your earnings, all right? So percentage change in earnings per share, all right? Then that is percentage change in, um, um, what do we call it? Earnings before interest and tax, all right? So that is that. Or you can even use this one, EBIT minus interest. Whichever one that you want to. So you are all, the only thing you are doing is percentage change. So if it is operating income, then it is respect to sales. If it is earnings, then it is in respect to earnings per share and um, operating earnings, earnings before interest and tax. The percentage changes on them. That's all. You are done. I mean, that is it. So um, we will look at 
optimal capital mix, which is more theory, the explanation you need to get to, I will explain it in another video. All right. So basically, that is that. All the best. See you in optimal capital structure. Bye-bye.